Hi, it's me, Mrs. Albania, and I'm going to read chapter 14 to you. And I hope that this video is less than 15 minutes long because that's all that YouTube lets me upload at a time because I'm not famous. So here we go. Chapter 14 in our book um, is called No Toys in the Fish Tank. Sit back and enjoy the lovely sound of my voice. Monday morning, my heart jumps to see the minivan in the driveway next door when I wake up. I get dressed and eat my breakfast in little bites, so if Christy calls, I won't answer with a mouthful of cereal. At 9 o'clock, the phone rings. I'll get it! I jump in the direction of the kitchen, where Mom and David are still having breakfast. Please don't let it be one of Mom's clients, or Dad calling from work. I wait two more rings, so I won't seem like it's. I'm waiting next to the phone. Hello? Hi, Catherine. It's Christy. I mouth, yes, to keep from squealing. Hi! I was wondering if you want to do something. I don't have to be at the community center until noon. Sure, that'd be great. Could we hang out at your house? Mine is crazy today, Christy says. Mom forgot to tell the plumber what, tell me the plumber was coming and now I can't even take a shower. I'd like to say you can shower at my house to be nice, but with David home, the embarrassment chances are way too risky. Wanna go swimming? There's a pool? It's a pond, but it's not too far. There's a raft and a little beach that anyone can use. She hesitates so long, I ask, are you still there? I'll be over in a few minutes, she said. In my bedroom, I tug open the top drawer of my bureau to pick a bathing suit. The blue one piece is good for swimming, but it's not pretty. I love the purple and white bikini that looks like batik, but the top slides when I dive. So I'm left with the last suit, green with gold flowers, swimmable, but not ugly. Though I'm hurrying, I take a couple seconds to stroke on sherry lip gloss and pink eyeshadow and comb my hair. Maybe I'll try my hair loose today, parted a little on the side. With jean shorts over my bathing suit, my favorite beach towel draped around my neck, sunscreen lathered on, and flip-flops ready. Flip-flops on, I'm ready. Mom's still in the kitchen with David. Kneeling beside a pile of wet paper towels, she's cleaning a milk puddle from the linoleum. At the table, David swings his legs, eating his cereal. Christy and I are going to the pond, I tell Mom. I'll be back by lunch. Mom looks up from the spilled milk. I'm heading off to the store. Would you like me to drop your girls off on the way? No thanks, I say. We'll walk. She gathers the wet paper towels. David, when you're finished, get your shoes on. We need to go to the grocery store to buy something for lunch. He looks up from his bowl of cereal at the table, milk drops clinging to his chin. And a video? Okay, but just this time. David bolts from his seat, pushing past me to drop his bowl in the sink. Watch out, frog, he cries, bits of cereal splattering on the counter. Say, excuse me, Catherine. When he doesn't say it, Mom gets up to block the doorway. Excuse me, Catherine, she repeats, looking over her glasses at David. The doorbell rings. See you later. I squeeze past David and under Mom's arm. Though my name is part of the conversation, it's got nothing to do with me. I race down the hallway to the front door, but as soon as I see Christy, I wish I'd picked the purple and white bikini. She looks pretty in a long t-shirt and sandals, her hair hanging over her shoulder in a single braid. Can I borrow a beach towel, she asks. I can't find mine. Sure, I'll go grab one. When I come back to the living room with a second favorite beach towel, Christy giggles. There's a duck in your fish tank. Behind her, the aquarium cover juts out at a crooked angle. In the tank, David's rubber duck bobs along the surface, a goldfish mouthing its tail. Come on, I fake a smile, handing her the towel. Let's go. Outside, the air smells summery of mown grass and warm tar, and from somewhere high in the trees, I hear a woodpecker rapping. David is gone with Mom, and I'm free, walking down the road with Christy. I've never been swimming in a pond, Christy says, only in pools and in the ocean. It's fun. I make sure to keep in step with Christy, much warmer than the ocean, at least in Maine. It's gooey at the bottom when you're out of ways, but that's old pine needles and leaves. Once you get in, you probably won't notice a big difference from a pool. She doesn't look so sure. Approaching the corner, I can't believe how ordinary the bus stop looks in the summer, only another bend in the sidewalk. Christy slows, staring at Ryan's empty yard. Was I her second choice? Are there fish in there? Christy asks, kicking her sandals off on the sand. I follow her gaze out across the pond to the fringe of pine and white birch trees on the other shore. Only minnows come near the shore. On our side of the pond, there's a strip of sandy beach, but the far side has a steep, scooped-out bank tangled with bushes and roots of trees. Once I overheard Ryan tell someone that there's a big fish that loves under the raft, I say, still smarting from Christy's long look at his house. But I've never seen it, so I think he's lying. Christy wraps her finger around her braid. Is it deep? It's over my head, but not so deep I can't swim down and touch. Sometimes we dare each other to bring back muck from the bottom. Her knuckles whiten on her braid. But we don't have to do that, I say. Good. 
She walks to the shore, pulling off her t-shirt. Seeing her candy red bikini, I wish again I'd worn my purple and white one, even if I had to hold the top when I dove. I undo my shorts. I like your bathing suit. I wanted to wear my new one my aunt gave me, but I think it's with my laundry at my dad's. Chrissy points her foot, skimming the water with her toes. Standing in the pond, my ankles look crooked, cut by the water's surface. I study the water line's ripple of distortion, wanting to capture that in my sketchbook. That's a bad part of living in two places, Christy shudders, stepping into the pond with me. I never have what I need at the right house, and Mom just doesn't get it. This morning, she kept saying, just wear another bathing suit, like it didn't matter. Watching her adjust the straps of her bikini top, I wanted to tell her, I know how it feels to be split down the middle, too. Pulled between the regular world of school and friends and David's world, where none of the same things matter. And now, I don't belong completely in either world. But when someone is upset, it's not a good time to bring up one of your own problems. Christy takes a step farther into the water. I hate this bathing suit. The straps are always falling down. I'm in water to my knees now. I know what you mean. The top of my favorite bikini doesn't fit perfect, and it slides. <laughs> it's never shown anything, but... Chrissy smiles. I had a bathing suit like that once. It drove me crazy. Stepping deeper, the cold tingles my thighs. I rub goosebumps on my arm. It's always chilly at first, but you'll get used to it, I promise. Catherine, I'm sorry about the other day with the gum. I turn, but she's not looking at me. Chin down, Christy skims her fingertips across the surface of the water. David doesn't get jokes sometimes. The water feels warmer in my legs, and I take another step. Ryan didn't mean to upset him. He told me so. He didn't mean to upset you. The tiny waves created from Christy's hands moving the water make a freezing tickle on my stomach. He said, ah, uh, the bottom gets really gooey here, I say to change the subject. If you dive in now, you won't have to feel it. Plunging forward, my chest and my shoulders scream with the shock of the cold. I go under breast stroking, kicking hard until my lungs ache and I can't stay under water one more second. Breaking the surface, my hair is plastered to my face. I tread water, pushing it away. Christy stands in the shallows, her hands tracing across the pond's surface. Come on, I say, it's not bad once you get in. She takes a step. Are you kidding? It's a freezing. Not once you get in. I'll meet you at the raft. I love swimming in the water over my head. Cold emptiness under my feet. Those sudden warm spots are icy underwater springs. Almost to the raft, I flip to my back and give in to the lightness of floating. Held by the water, I watch the blue sky waiting for Christy to catch up. This is what I wished for. A next door friend I could just come and go with. She's out of breath when she reaches me. At the ladder, I grip the sides and swing my feet up to the bottom rung. Water showers off of me as I climb. A about that big fish, Christy says, swimming closer. W what kind is it? The air makes me shiver. I sit on the raft and wrap my arms around my knees. It's probably an eel, I said. Her eyes widen. I mean, it's probably not an eel. It's just a fish that looks like an eel. Christy scrambles up the ladder. Oh, yuck. I tuck my soaked hair behind my ears, wishing I had brought my hairband. I know without asking, Christy won't want to touch the bottom. She doesn't even seem to like the top of the water very much. Maybe we can lay out in the sun. We lie on our stomachs and I peek between the slats into the darkness below. The light, the slight rocking of the raft, the slosh of little waves slaking, slapping the boards beneath and the sun drying my back makes me yawn. I gotta find another suit. I look over to Christy fixing her shoulder straps. But if it's not at Dad's, I don't know where it is. She lays her chin on her arm. I wish Mom wouldn't give up so easy. It's not like, oh, sorry. I wish Mom wouldn't give so give up so easy. It's not like he had an affair. Maybe they're just taking a little break for a little while, I ask. Oh, maybe, Christy says. Do you think there really are fish down there? The sadness in her voice makes me want to give her something, even if it's only pretend. What if he is down there, I say, but he's magic like that fairy tale, the fisherman and his wife? Christy squeezes the end of her braid and drops of water falling off the tip, making beating onto the raft. I don't know that story. Well, this guy catches a big fish, except the fish says he is really a prince under a spell. The man lets the fish go, but his wife sends him back to get a, a wish granted. I'd scream if a fish started talking to me, she said. No, me too, but what would you wish? I wish my parents would get back together and be happy. She turns to me, her eyes worried. Do you think that's two wishes or one? one. Your turn. What's your wish? I look down between the raft boards and imagine my always wish, my fingers reaching through the perfect top of David's head, finding the broken plate places in his brain, turning knobs or flipping switches. All of his autism is wiped clean. But saying that wish brings trouble. 
all people have a place, my third grade teacher said firmly when I drew a pretend older brother in the My Family picture to be put out in the hallway for open house. I tried to tell her it was still David, but I wanted him to be able to play with me. And since I was fixing things, I made him older so that he could stick up for me. But I had to draw the picture over and visit the guidance counselor instead of going to music. Why is it in fairy tales wishes always backfire? I ask. If you want to change the subject, confuse the other person by going off on a wild, chatty detour. Like in The Fisherman and His Wife, I continue, the fisherman's wife keeps wanting bigger things. And by the end of the story, Hey! The voice calls. Chris! I sit up so quick I scrape my knees on the raft. Ryan waves, standing in the sand at the shore. Behind him, his bike rests propped against a tree. Christy waves back. Hi! I hope she yells at him to go home. But she says, come on, Catherine, and does a running dive heading for the shore. I let her swim ahead of me. I do the best breaststroke, dipping my face in and out of the water so I don't have to see Ryan standing on the sand waiting for us. At the shore, I cross my arms over my stomach and walk to my shorts and my towel. Your mom said you were here, Ryan says to Christy. Did you talk to Catherine yet? Sorry, did you ask Catherine yet? Ask me. Christy smiles. Catherine, you know how the community center is holding a dance on Saturday? I nod. They asked me to help decorate, Christy's, Christy says, and I was hoping I could help you decorate. I say, grabbing my towel off the stand. I'm really good at making posters. Actually, I was hoping that you'd like to go. Christy glances at Ryan. Me and Ryan and you and somebody. It would be so much fun. Please say yes. I wrap my towel around me as tight as I can. I don't know anyone to ask. Ask Jason, Christy says. That boy you drew, this is your chance to ask him out. I open my mouth, but Ryan's smirk makes me close it. But that's not the only reason I don't tell. I don't dance, I said, my feet into my flip-flops. I'll teach you, Christy says. Well, my dad works late, so I don't think I could get a ride. My mom can drop us off and take us. On the walk home, Christy has an answer for every one of my I can'ts. She'll leave alone me clothes and do my hair. Ask him, she says. By the time she's heading up her driveway, Christy has cornered me into a stuttered, mm, I'll think about it. In my room, I peel off my damp bathing suit and put on my first clothes from my pull from my bureau, an old short shirt and shorts that don't match. I comb what snarls from my hair and watch Christy's minivan backing out of their driveway. Did Christy call me because she can't go to the dance with Ryan unless I go too? The minivan disappears from view. I turned my bulletin board and the postcard from Disneyland tacked on the top. I wish it wasn't so expensive to call California. I want to tell Melissa everything and hear her say, it's okay, Catherine, but it would take too long to explain, and maybe she'd be mad I cared so much about Christy being my new friend. In my sketchbook, I try to draw my ankles distorted by pond water, but they don't look warped and interesting. They look broken. I write words in the white space beside the sketch, but after pond and icy, the only ones that'll come are guilty, complicated, hidden, weak. I close my sketchbook. I made it under 15 minutes. All right, tune in for chapter 15 next. Yeah.